question. Uh, the game itself, where it's gone with the equipment and everything, I, it's, it's almost to the point now where I don't know that they can build a golf course long enough, strong enough. Whatever they do, I mean, it seems to me like, and I've talked to Jack, I've talked to a lot of people, unless they come up with some kind of standard golf ball that everybody has to play, that the game is just going to keep changing towards a power game, which my opinion is a teacher, what I see, and you can tell me what you think. That whole quest for distance and that that's somehow the magic bullet for the average person, for 99% of people who play the game, is a disaster. Mm. Absolute, total disaster. I couldn't agree with you more, Mike. You know, we play in a lot of pro-ams throughout the course of the year, whether it be outings or tournament-related pro-ams. And, and I suppose... Uh, Unless you are a really good player, a very low handicap player, the odds of you really seeing the benefits of the advertisement yeah. are not very good. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be fit for clubs that are oh, better yeah, for, for you sure. and all that. That doesn't mean it. And you might have a golf swing. That, but unless you create club head speed, you're not going to see these incremental distances jump from, well, I went from 250-yard drives to 300, it's not going to happen. doesn't happen. No. It might go from 250 to 251. Yeah. And I just, I can tell you that right now because it's happened to me. My club same. head speed has come back. Yeah. And I don't care what club I hit or with what ball, they all go the same right now. Yeah. Uh, but, it, it, and they're all real close to me. <laughs> but I, I think <laughs> closer, than. <laughs> closer than they used to be. And I know that because the courses we play year after year after year, I used to be there. Yeah. Now I'm here with better equipment today, better balls. But anyway, so anyway, to me, I, and I don't know this, but I, I asked the question because I'd like to get an answer is if we took the size of the driver head from 460 cc's right. down to 400. So we decrease that rebound effect some, 380 cc's, whatever. Let's yeah. bring it down. Okay, let's take the ball and what is it, 280 feet per second or yep. two? Okay, let's say that comes down to 250 feet per second. Whatever the 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 measuring device or the line in the sand, whatever it is, let's reduce those. You can still have your Titleist balls and your Callaway balls yeah, and your Shrixa. They just have to now meet that 250 or 225. If you could decrease the length or the, the speed of the ball by 10%, whatever that is. Let's call it 280, so now 10, you're 28 yards. Yeah. Round it up to 30 yards. If those 30 yards could be added to a golf course, if you could take that yep. and add it now, 30 yards becomes, you know, you, the 7,000 yard course now becomes- Pretty long. It can be long. Yeah. This course is saw Kiowa. You know, now from being 7,980 or whatever it is, it becomes 8,000 something. Yeah, it's, Im it's impossible. And, and so where is this going to stop? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't see it stopping unless they draw the line in the sand. And whoever they are, they've got to say, I don't care if it's oh, in the year 2030 or 2050 or 2022. I don't care. Put that line in the sand and have all the manufacturers say, okay, at this point in time, give them time to depreciate their equipment, write it all down, get new equipment in, <clears throat> if that's what it takes. So from a business model, you're not just throwing money away because you got a new camera. Right, right. Okay, let's wear that camera out and then replace it because now it's, it's depreciated. It's written off the books. Right. I, I get that. But we've got to do something that says, in the future, we are not going to allow anchoring, if this is anchoring, if this is anchoring, you, you can't have it. Attached. It's got to be in your hands yeah. and nowhere else. That's, that's an integral part of our game is how you manipulate between the mind yeah. and the ball. There's hands in there, and those hands want to do this. Oh, so your hands are important in the golf swing. <laughs> Everybody says take your hands out of the yeah, golf swing. Yeah. That's a whole uh, other story. Yeah, that's another story altogether. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because, like I say, I've been with basically Taylor made my the last 20 some odd years and it's phenomenal what they've done with clubs mm -hmm. and everything like that and how much easier they've made it for for a person to get the ball in the air and hit it fairly straight 
But the, the, the reality, what I see though, is who really takes advantage of the technology is the better player. Oh, absolutely. And so it's not necessarily made the average player that much better, but it's made the tour players significantly better, and it's made more of those players competitive. You know, because it's, it's brought the misses in, mm -hmm. and it's it's mm -hmm. made a guy who maybe isn't quite as good, doesn't have to be quite as good in that heat situation with those clubs to hit it and still have a decent shot and yeah. come off where they can where they can win. Well, I think a good example is just this last week at Kiowa. We saw a course that was very long, yeah, very demanding, and and some of the free swingers um, didn't do too well. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that did have experience. They kind of play their shots. They play within themselves. And Phil obviously was a winner, and we've seen Phil hit some really crooked shots. And what did he hit yesterday? Maybe six fairways, five fairways, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Still not driving the ball well, but we're seeing such strength in how far they hit it. Oh, it's incredible. They, they don't worry too much about being offline now. And give me a, a Louis Oosthuizen any day on any course. And that tempo, that temperament, that the way he plays is is going to make it. Now, will it be uh, uh, Bryson DeChambeau? No, but Bryson has put a whole different Differently. twist. Yeah. But if we're trying to go that way, and I think even Rory admits he tried to go that way, and now he's trying he's to find his a, way back. Yeah. Back is where the game should be played. You can't play to the extremes. You got to play to the middle. Play to the middle. And the same with the golf course. Play the middle of the fairway. Why, why try to drive the green? You know, gonna, if you miss it, you're going to have a tougher second shot than you did if you laid up. <laughs> You've got you to play think. the game up here. And that's where I think most people can learn to play better between their ears and not expect the salesman who comes up and says, well, that's 20 more yards. They're not going to get it. Yeah. You know, buy this driver and you get 20 more yards. Is that guaranteed? You get 20 more yards. Not a guarantee. It just doesn't happen. But that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see all the equipment uh, brought down in size. You look at the old clubs from yesteryear, and those little blades are so tiny. Oh yeah. Uh, well, let's just say you can't be bigger than whatever it is, and it, the head can't be bigger than this, and the ball can't go faster than that. And it's just, it, but you can still have your individual manufacturers creating that that drama and you bring these courses that now at 7,000 yards it's a pitch and putt for most yeah, most they are pros. driver wedges for, for most people yeah. it's it's a long golf course still yeah. now if, if you want to play monster day and move it back to 7200 and put the cups on slopes where they are on the tour have at it yeah. because it's not going to work <laughs> Well, Hale, listen, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you spending some time and what you said earlier about helping people. What we've done here and what I'm doing with my site and, and the whole youth movement and golf in general, I just want to tell you thank you for being willing to talk. It's not everybody that is. And I appreciate your career and everything you've done and you've been great with me and just, you know, well, Mike, as a friend, you know, this, thank you very much. This game has given me so much. And I don't think I can ever give back the proper amount. But what I really hope is that the, the kids that are turned on to the game today turn on to the game with other activities. And golf is still their sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But they do other things. Whatever that may be, y you learn more about yourself. And if you love golf, you'll love it even more. So yeah. that's what I hope parents and kids take away is that golf's a game for a lifetime, not just because you're 6 years old or 12 years old. You can be nearly 76 to still enjoy it. That's awesome. Thanks again. You got it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for regular updates and tips. Thanks for watching.